What's up guys and welcome back to another Revit Tools video. In this video we'll be talking about the Rotate tool. I do first want to say thank you to my 100 subscribers. I know that's not a lot of you, but thank you to everyone who's subscribed especially, but to everyone who's watched my videos and is eager to look for more videos coming in the future. With that said, let's get right into the Rotate tool. It's in the Modified tab. We've got the Rotate tool there. And when I click the Rotate tool, you can see on my mouse icon, I've got the Rotate tool and I'm first prompted to select an element that I'd like to rotate. Let's say I want to rotate this wall. I then need to click Enter. And like we do with lots of other tools, while the tool is active, I see the work plane that this tool is using with the dotted dashed line. The wall which I've highlighted and used to rotate is highlighted still and now I am able to use the rotate tool. A few things to note with the rotate tool is that there's a center of rotation which is noted by that dot there with the, which is by default to the center of what you've selected in this case the wall and that I've got a line coming off from there towards my cursor that I can use to start the rotation. If you look up here at the top, there's a disjoint option, a copy option, a blank angle option, and the option to center, uh, choose the center of rotation by placing that. So by default, none of these are checked or in the, and there's no value within the angle. So it's essentially up to me at this point to decide how I want to rotate this wall. And so I can click anywhere and then I'm prompted to click again but now at this point I have a visible angle that is shown from the, that start point. So let's say I, I want to go you know the 40, uh, 40 degrees there and because the door is hosted to the wall it went with it. I'll undo that and let's go back to the rotate tool. Just like lots of other tools, again with the rotate tool you can select what you'd like to rotate and then choose the rotate tool and you'll immediately go into the act of rotating which is generally how I go about using most of these tools. So now I'll select anywhere to start and now I can input a specific value maybe I want to do 45 degrees and then I'm getting a 45 degree rotation of that wall along with the door going with it. I'll undo that again select the wall hit the rotate tool and now we can begin to play with the placement of that rotation. So say the center of the rotation, I can choose place and now I have the option of choosing anywhere, anywhere in the model actually to choose where to start rotating this wall. And so this, this could be maybe an end point of the wall and now I could click anywhere, rotate 90 degrees and you can get, you can see that rotation happen right there. I can select the wall again, hit the rotate tool and I can choose with assuming that we want to keep the center of the rotation placed in the center I could choose 60 degrees in the angle and then we get that rotation there by default counterclockwise is the direction that Revit will rotate things oftentimes what I do instead of going through the act of hitting a uh, specific angle that I want I'm just gonna select anywhere and then type 60 if I want 60 and, and achieve the same thing that way a lot quicker. So just about everything in Revit can be rotated. Not a lot of things you'll necessarily want to rotate. Like you won't necessarily want to rotate floors or roofs. It, it's kind of weird but it'll all work the same but I've got a basic desk component here and if I choose rotate I have, I have the same options again. It's based on the the work plane, which is the, in this case level one, I can click anywhere and I can rotate the desk no problem. It's not a big deal. And so I'm going to go to 3D actually. And so what I have here is I've got four walls which are connected to a floor. And I'll redraw this floor to show you exactly how I've connected that floor. I go to architecture and I go to floor. By default, the pick walls is going to be the option that's chosen up here as to how you want to draw the floor and so I'll just pick all four of these walls. I will end it and now 
the walls are attached to the floor. And we can see that in action, if we select one of the walls while holding the wall, I can press and drag, and you can see that floor moves with it. And this, this works with the align tool as well. So I can just push that around. We can see that that floor is attached, or that wall rather, is attached to the floor. So now let, let's move into, I'll go back to the desk just to show you uh, the rotate tool again in 3D. And again, by default, that, that work plane is going to be level one. And so you might be thinking that if you've seen some of my past videos, you can select an object, click on the view cube and go to a specific elevation of an object. And this in a way, because you've in a, kind of forced a work plane, if you choose the rotate option now, we are actually unfortunately stuck with the rotation on level one and that's just because of the type of element we're using. But with lots of other elements, for example, let's, I will go to component, I've got this light here, I'll, I'll put this light on the wall. And if I select the light, I zoom in on it and I'll hit enter or I'll choose the rotate tool. You could see the host of the light is on the wall and so it's asking and wanting me to rotate about this wall. Now if I go to a top view, if I select the light, go to a top view and I rotate now, you can see that the work plane has changed to that top view. Now again, this is a constraint of the component itself, but if I try and rotate this light 90 degrees, nothing will happen because the light is attached and hosted to this wall, which rotating a different direction in this case would not work. Looking back at these walls here with the walls attached to the floor, if I want to rotate this wall in the back and I choose rotate, I'll get that work plane showing up again on level one. And maybe I want to rotate this wall 10 degrees. I'll rotate it 10 degrees and you can see if I go to a top view that that, that floor, because it's attached to the wall, moved with it perfectly. And that's great. And I'll, I'll rotate it back 10 degrees and we can see that it's perfectly aligned like it was. And the, the floor followed the wall just like we'd hoped because it's attached. So what we can do now, there's one more option we haven't discussed with the rotate tool, and that's the disjoint option. So you've seen that this wall is attached to the floor. When I move the walls, the floor goes with it. So now if I choose disjoint, and let's say I rotate this wall 90 degrees, first of all, I get an element or an error saying that this element has been detached and the constraints cannot be satisfied. That's fine, not a big deal. It's basically telling us to delete the floor. That's not a huge deal. But I'm gonna undo that, and so I've got that floor back again. I'll select the wall, I'll rotate this, and disjoin, I'll just do 10 degrees this time. And now we can see that the wall is no longer attached to the floor, i.e. disjoined, but the rotation was successful. So that's just something to keep in mind whenever you're using the rotate tool. And I would say this last bit of the rotate tool is, I would say, you underutilized. And even by myself, I, a lot of times I usually don't think about the rotate tool having this capability or I, I usually find some other way to achieve this. So I'm gonna draw a detail line of going to annotate. Of course, I need to be in level one. DL for detail line, I'll draw a circle just right over here. That works. And this is a railing. You can rotate this just like you can anything else. And I'll choose a rotate option and I'll actually choose copy. So what happens when I choose copy is that maybe I want to rotate this railing 90 degrees. And the result is I get a copy. And that makes sense, it's self-explanatory, but that's really nice to know that you can copy that via a rotation also it's not just the copy tool so I'll delete that I'll choose the rotation and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the location of the center point and instead of hitting hitting center of rotation and choosing that location myself I'm gonna select this point and click and drag and now I have control over this center of rotation and I'm gonna move that to the center of this circle here 
And now this, the center of rotation for this rail is inside that circle and I can begin to move this railing around and rotate it around this circle. So I can rotate it around the circle like this, 20 degrees that way. So I'll hit rotate again. I will click and drag that center rotation back to the center of the circle. And, but this time I'll use copy. And so now if we go up here, I'll, maybe I want 45 degrees. We can see we get a copy of that railing very easily rotated about the center of this circle. And that's really helpful, something that you may not normally know about the rotate tool or and probably not normally need to do all the time, but knowing that you have the capabilities to do that with a rotate tool is pretty good. So I can select both of those again, hit the rotate tool, I'll move that center of rotation back to the center of that circle. I will hit copy and I'll click anywhere and again, and this time I'll hit, I'll choose maybe 135 degrees. And so now we can see that we can start rotating all of these rails about this one center circle. Just something that you can do with a rotate tool. I sure hope you learned something when it comes to the rotate tool. It's not the most exciting tool in Revit, that's okay, but we all need to rotate things and knowing everything that you can do with the rotate tool in this case is very helpful. I sure hope you learned something. If you did, if you would please leave a like, it definitely helps. Also subscribe. There will be plenty more videos coming out soon with other Revit tools covered as well as other types of videos, getting into Dynamo materials and even more. I sure hope you have a great day. Thanks for watching.